To carry out a successful first strike, you need to get your troops where they have to be in a hurry. A combat personnel carrier needs to be heavily armored and equipped with enough firepower to defend its payload or launch an attack if necessary. That's just not enough for really tough customers like the Marines. They demand all of that, then they want more. What they need is a transformer. A typical Marine operation goes from sea to land and back again. And that means a heavily armored, fully weaponized land vehicle that turns into a top speed seagoing vessel without stopping. They call it the Expeditionary Fighting Vehicle. This is the Marine Amphibious Assault Vehicle, or AAV, and it's seen its fair share of war. But it's based on technology from the 1960s and has limitations on today's modern battlefield. One of its limitations is that it simply can't travel long distances at sea. The AAV has to be launched from the mothership as little as three miles from the coast and signals to the enemy that you're coming. Another serious drawback is that it's just too slow. With a top sea speed of around just seven knots, the old AAV leaves itself even more vulnerable to attack. Program manager Colonel John Bryant is the man in charge of the EFV's development. AAV has been a workhorse for the Marine Corps, but we have the ability now to field something much more capable, to field a much more powerful weapon system, to provide a much more capable vehicle, and to provide something that the infantry Marine deserves to ride into combat. The Marines' latest tactical approach is to launch coastal attacks from much further out to sea. This strategy is called over the horizon or forcible entry attack. But for that, you need an amphibious vehicle that's up to the job. The Marine Corps needs the EFV because it brings a quantum leap in our forcible entry capability. With the EFV, we can place those amphibious ships 25 nautical miles out at sea. They're over the horizon, they're safe. We can make a high speed run, we can attack almost anywhere within a huge range and the enemy has no idea where we're going to come. The Marines Air and Sea Fleet will be a formidable force of over-the-horizon attack vehicles. The NV-22 Osprey aircraft. The landing craft air cushion. And the EFB. With this fleet, the Marines will have the speed, versatility, and power to launch the ultimate first strike. The Marine Expeditionary Fighting Vehicle is an evolutionary jump in amphibious warfare. With an impressive list of new operational capabilities like increased lethality, increased survivability, and increased horsepower. The EFE brings a whole new meaning to the words deadly assault. But the most significant feature of the EFV's design is its sheer speed on water. It easily travels at 29 knots in the sea, four times faster than the old AAV. For an amphibious assault vehicle, that's not only record-breaking, it's also vital in a first strike. It's key to make sure the enemy cannot predict where we're going to go. We want to hit him where he doesn't expect us. Much thicker armor than its predecessor, the fully loaded EFB is almost 10 tons heavier than the AAV. So how do you keep a massive 76,000 pounds of combat vehicle afloat and on the move? The answer? A state-of-the-art engine with tons of turbo power. The turbo capability is what creates the horsepower. It's what spins this engine up to go from 851 horsepower in land mode to the 2,703 horsepower we need in water mode to get that 76,000 pounds up on plane. The EFB achieves these speeds not by cutting through the waves, but by gliding over them like a jet ski. But this is more than just a high-speed vehicle. The built-in computer system means the whole vehicle can be controlled from a single crew member's position. One of the coolest updates the Marine Corps has put into the EFB is this thing called the CDP, or Common Display Panel. It is basically the computer brain of this whole vehicle, and the driver can pretty much control everything they need to control from this panel. 
There's also a sophisticated GPS system providing precise location and target information. It allows us, the crew, to see where the vehicle's located at during, especially 25 knock miles out. We can uh, track our route to, to hit our beach objective. Oh, you guys are so lucky, man. When I was back in my day, we'd jump out of an airplane in a little rubber boat and we'd have to figure out what compass, where the heck we were trying to get our way. Now you have GPS capability. You know exactly where you are over the horizon. You're able to bring that vehicle right up on the shore. Having a GPS location is one thing, but to actually see where you're going, especially in the dark, you've got the driver's thermal viewer, or DTV. This gives the crew a complete view of land or water, day or night. And once this amphibious tracked vehicle, or Amtrak, gets to shore, it just keeps on moving. And I'm about to take it for a test drive. Nobody knows how to enjoy the beach more than the United States Marine Corps. <laughs> on land. The EFV can reach speeds of up to 45 miles an hour with all-terrain mobility. So it can easily keep up with a battle tank's cruising speed. And even after its 25-mile sea run, it can keep going on land for another 200 miles without refueling. So why take two vehicles into battle when the EFV does the work of both? Expeditionary Fighting Vehicle, or EFV, is two amazing transports in one. A powerful weapons platform and a heavily armored personnel carrier that transforms from sea vessel to land vehicle while on the move. That's a major first strike advantage. Making the transformation from steel tracked land vehicle to a high speed sea craft is an incredible engineering achievement. But when you think that the EFV does it without even stopping, it's more like a miracle. I asked Sergeant Frederick to talk me through how this is possible. I'm going to be able to show you how it reconfigures into water mode. It's got a bow plane on the front that's going to extend. The track is going to start sucking up into the hole. It's going to push out back. And I got these chine flaps right here. Mm -hmm. These are going to fold underneath the vehicle and okay. make it a complete smooth flat bottom. Oh, fantastic. Now we've got a full flat bottom boat. Wow. Incredible. A real-life transformer. A real-life transformer. That's it. Time to hit the waves. Surf's up. As soon as the EFB leaves the shore, it begins its transformation. The tracks come up. The transit flap comes out. And within seconds, it goes from tank to boat. Once that turbo power kicks in, Nearly 3,000 horsepower pushes all that 38 tons of EFV onto the water's surface. Even in rough seas, this mighty metal amphibian will still maintain its top speed. Two propulsion jets pump out almost a quarter of a million gallons of water every minute to power it over the ocean. At that rate, it could fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool in less than three minutes. And all that sheer propulsion power means that on the water, the poor old amphibious assault vehicle is simply no match for its replacement. It just doesn't stand a chance. It's precisely this massive increase in sea speed and range that allows that all-important over-the-horizon forced entry attack. The next challenge is the transition from sea to land. Getting smoothly out of the water at the coastline has always been a difficult and dangerous task for an amphibious craft. But not for the EFB. It simply transfers all that power from the high-speed water jets to the vehicle's tracks. And once it gets on land, the EFB can safely deliver its lethal payload. An entire combat marine squad, fully loaded and ready for action. But make no mistake, the EFB's job is far from over. It's just as much a part of the action as the infantry squad it's designed to carry. The EFB can bring 17 hard charge marines into the battle, but it is no taxi. It's ready to fight, and so is its 30 millimeter cannon. Guided by a high precision day or night fire control, the EFB's Mark 46 weapon system is based around an automatic cannon that can pump out 230 millimeter rounds a minute. 
Unless you have some serious military hardware on your side, you really don't want to mess with this. This can destroy any threat vehicle short of a main battle tank. We can reach out to a target in excess of 2,000 meters away. We can hit with a first burst. We can hit day or night. We can hit in fog. We can hit in the rain. We can hit the enemy with a first burst before he even knows we're there. As if that wasn't enough, the EFB also includes a 7.62 millimeter machine gun. When vehicles square off, it's all about who puts steel on target first. With this weapon system, we can put lethal steel on target first, every time. The fire control system knows exactly how far away that target is, and our fire control system can then compute the exact super elevation, the exact fire control solution to put that first burst on target. This vehicle is so lethal because it packs a mean gun with an incredible fire control system. It's designed to carry Marines, but don't make it mad. This truly amazing vehicle gives the Marines the power, speed, and flexibility they need to launch a first strike before the enemy even knows they're coming. The intimidating EFB, 38 tons of killer craft, surfing the seas and hitting the beach, ready for war. Amphibious Assault Vehicle, or AAV, and it's seen its fair share of war. But it's based on technology from the 1960s and has limitations on today's modern battlefield. One of its limitations is that it simply can't travel long distances at sea. The AAV has to be launched from the mothership as little as three miles from the coast and signals to the enemy that you're coming. Another serious drawback is that it's just too slow. With a top sea speed of around just seven knots, the old AAV leaves itself even more vulnerable to attack. Program manager Colonel John Bryant is the man in charge of the EFB's development. AAV has been a workhorse for the Marine Corps, but we have the ability now to feel some. To carry out a successful first strike, you need to get your troops where they have to be in a hurry. A combat personnel carrier needs to be heavily armored and equipped with enough firepower to defend its payload or launch an attack if necessary. That's just not enough for really tough customers like the Marines. They demand all of that, then they want more. What they need is a transformer. A typical Marine operation goes from sea to land and back again. And that means a heavily armored, fully weaponized land vehicle that turns into a top speed seagoing vessel without stopping. They call it the Expeditionary Fighting Vehicle. This is the Marine. Something much more capable, to field a much more powerful weapon system, to provide a much more capable vehicle, and to provide something that the infantry Marine deserves to ride into combat. The Marines' latest tactical approach is to launch coastal attacks from much further out to sea. This strategy is called Over the Horizon, or Forcible Entry Attack. But for that, you need an amphibious vehicle that's up to the job. The Marine Corps needs the EFV because it brings a quantum leap in our forcible entry capability. With the EFV, we can place those amphibious ships 25 nautical miles out at sea. They're over the horizon, they're safe, we can make a high speed run, we can attack almost anywhere within a huge range, and the enemy has no idea where we're gonna come. The Marines' air and sea fleet will be a formidable force of over the horizon attack vehicles. The NV-22 Osprey aircraft. The landing craft air cushion. And the EFB. With this fleet, the Marines will have the speed, versatility, and power to launch the ultimate first strike. 
The Marine Expeditionary Fighting Vehicle is an evolutionary jump in amphibious warfare with an impressive list of new operational capabilities like increased lethality, increased survivability, and increased horsepower. The EFE brings a whole new meaning to the words deadly assault. But the most significant feature of the EFV's design is its sheer speed on water. It easily travels at 29 knots in the sea, four times faster than the old AAV. For an amphibious assault vehicle, that's not only record-breaking, it's also vital in a first strike. It's key to make sure the enemy cannot predict where we're going to go. We want to hit him where he doesn't expect us. Much thicker armor than its predecessor, the fully loaded EFB is almost 10 tons heavier than the AAV. So how do you keep a massive 76,000 pounds of combat vehicle afloat? And